Good afternoon, traders and investors. Will back here with another one coming to you with a Monday market recap. Hope all of you had a very beautiful day of trading and a very good weekend as well. And in today's markets, guys, well, the bulls continue on their absolute domination march towards new all-time highs on the S&P. The QQQ is not quite there yet, still about a percent and a half away, but the SPY is definitely putting on a show. And all of your major market sectors today, once again, guys, were in the green. However, however, I still do not believe that this is the time to go all in and go YOLO at the all time highs. If you currently have positions that are heavily in the green because you were buying the dips over the last month, last three weeks type of thing, trust me guys, nobody ever went broke taking profits or possibly taking profits a little bit early. We cannot forget guys the, that the bears do still have a very valid thesis here in saying that they might be a little bit more than a soft landing recession scenario. We know that employment numbers right now are kind of on the rocks, right? They're sketchy at best, given that. We also know that economic output is on the slight decline. And even though inflation has been getting tremendously better over the last six to nine months, there's still this looming concern that there might just be a little bit of resurgence in inflation. Couple that with October seasonality. A lot of things on the table right now. The geopolitical conflict between Israel and Iran is still not absolutely resolved. We have election uncertainty as well. And usually October, during an election cycle is known to be somewhat of a negative month. I'm not saying it happens every single October in a presidential election year. However, it is known to be one of the more bearish months of an entire election year. And finally, to wrap it all off, guys, well, we have the start of a very, very big earnings season. And a lot of the focus will be on are corporations able to keep up the same level of profits or are profits maybe going to start dwindling because of consumer demand that's been weakened and weakened? And then, of course, we have to look at the jobs numbers that these companies are putting out. Are they continuously hiring or are they starting to lay off people, which could lead to more rounds of layoffs, more weak unemployment numbers. So do not forget, guys, the bears still do have a very good case and a very good thesis right here, which is why in these markets right now, I remain cautiously optimistic and the key focus is on the word cautiously, right? So I am still positioned long with most of my portfolio, but I am taking profits aggressively on all the swing trades that I make. And I'm being very selective with the companies that I'm choosing to buy right now. I am not chasing companies, guys, on absolute tears, green candle breakouts through all time highs and stuff like that. I'm just not doing it. I'm waiting patiently for companies to come back to me or playing the ones right now that may not yet have rallied so much. So that is pretty much where I stand on the market right now. Now, in terms of today's video, guys, what we're going to do together, well, we're going to go through our major technical analysis rundown of our major market indexes, see how everything is shaping up, check on the rotation, and then take a look at our major big tech names in terms of technical analysis, see if there's still some good deals to be had before we launch into that big tech earnings season. And lastly, take a quick glimpse into my portfolio for the trades I opened today and what I have positioned into this week as a whole. So without further ado, guys, let's jump right into the action. So the SPY up a very healthy healthy 0.82%. The QQQ is up a very healthy 0.84%. And when we take a look at the heat map right here for the end of the day close, you will see that it was fairly broad market driven market today as well. Most of all your big tech names were green, except for Amazon pulling back a little bit. Most of all your semiconductor names were green as well, except for AMD also pulling back a little bit. Financials having a very good day. They have a lot more earnings guys coming tomorrow, right? So tomorrow we're going to be getting Citigroup, Bank of America, right? Charles Schwab, Goldman Sachs, State Street as well. After the close, we have Interactive Brokers, one of the largest brokers. And then on Wednesday, a few more as well, right? US Bank Corp and stuff like that. So just keep our eyes peeled. Financials earnings are almost behind us. And then of course, we have another big one here, American Express on the Friday session. So this week, which should still be all about financials, but we also have two massive semiconductor names in ASML and TSMC. And then of of course, Netflix kicking it off for the big tech earnings. So it should be a fairly interesting week to say the least, which is why I'm keeping a lot of my buying power for after these earnings plays, right? I want to position myself after some of these companies maybe have a 5, 10% drop 
things like that. And I'll only be looking for the highest quality plays. But as a whole, guys, heat map was good, right? Healthcare good and the bottom half of the market fairly decent as well. Taking a look at the one day relative here, guys, you will see that everything pretty much in the green over the course of the day, except for energy, very logical move down on uh, oil after we didn't have an escalation of tensions in the Middle East. I know the tensions are still high, but as long as they're not continuously escalating, it's very tough for oil to keep going on that monster push higher, right? On the one week relative, same picture, everything in the green except for the energy trade, which is slightly coming back, right? Taking a look at some of the names that were standing out to us today, well, to the downside, we had a little bit of a pullback on the China trade, right? Pinduoduo Duo down about 6%, Baidu down about 4.5%, and we're kind of coming back down to normal as we've said this before last week on the channel, people are just not quite happy and convinced that the stimulus measures put out by China are enough. Now, $258 billion sounds like a very decent number, but the expectation was for at least twice that. So people being a little bit disappointed right now, but in my humble opinion right now, just a healthy pullback after a monster move. So we'll keep our eyes peeled on the China trade. They were some of your loss leaders for the day today. And to the upside, well, it had to do everything about financials and a few of your crypto names because Bitcoin's been up as well. SoFi going on an absolute tear. Very tough for me to buy up here though, guys, because we're coming directly in to this big, big, big area of resistance, right? Very tough for me to take along into resistance. I'm more keen on waiting for the possible uh, retest of some lower levels, possibly the 9850s again, positioning from there, waiting patiently for the weekly higher low for possible further trend continuation. Very tough to take, take a trade up here on SoFi. Uh, and another few names that have come, that have been beaten down a lot, trying to find a local bottom. CLH as well, trying to find its local bottom. I'll show you what they're trying to do. We're trying to reverse this into the new daily uptrend, guys. We've not had a new daily uptrend since the entire drop started in May at $100. So this could be it. Might be an interesting trade for some follow through, guys. The stop loss is a fair bit away here at $28. So you're risking about $7 per share, but the take profit area is largely in the high 40s. So still some decent risk reward on that one. And the same thing for Elf Beauty, right? Elf Beauty, Elf Beauty as well, trying to reverse into a possible first, first reiteration of a daily uptrend since the massive drop started back there in the 200 range. So those two names, I'll be keeping a very, very, very close eye on for possibly some swing trade opportunities on some of the names that have really been beaten down in the consumer discretionary segment. So so that being said, taking that out of the way, guys, let's now dive into our major technical analysis on the major indexes. So in terms of SPY, not much has changed, guys. Bulls still in full control, right? Beautiful daily uptrend in formation right now. You can see it even more clearly on the futures chart, right? No secret there. The bulls are in full control right now. So as soon as we get a pullback, how do we know the pullback is starting, guys? You need to see a loss of the uh, hourly 12 EMA and a loss of the hourly trend as well. If you see that hourly downtrend, that will mean that we're in for daily consolidation. And at this point, guys, anything above these guys down here, 565, just looking for a daily higher low for possible further trend continuation. Where do we have some confluence? Prior resistance is going to be newfound support. And look at that. It lines directly up with the 12 EMA. So this is going to be your first line of defense around the 575. But all in all, bulls control everything right now, guys. They control the monthly. They control the weekly time frame. And they control the daily time frame as well. So before we start thinking about any shorts whatsoever, the bulls need to at least forfeit the daily uptrend, and then we can look at possibly some weekly consolidation, right? Moving into QQQ, QQQ also not looking too bad. Same pattern as the SPY, looking very good, guys. Confirmed daily uptrend, continuously in motion. You can see it even better on the futures chart, right? A lot more clean, uh, a lot more clean chart to speak of. So daily higher lows are set, 477.82. Any pullback at this point, same thing, looking for a daily higher low for possible further trend continuation into the all-time highs, which are just about a percent and a half away. So QQQ, full bull control right now the monthly bulls full control the weekly bulls full control as well so before we think about any short positioning whatsoever and trying to pick the tops that never come we should be waiting for some daily downtrend confirmation lets us know that the weekly highs are set and then we're looking for the weekly higher lows at that point anything above 446 for a weekly higher low for further trend continuation right so now moving into the xlf xlf also looking very good today 0.62 percent they will be heavily impacted by the remainder of your bank earnings earnings tomorrow. So we'll see what happens with those Morgan Stanley on the Wednesday session as well. But as of right now, guys, 
Financials looking very, very clean. All-time high breakout, and we created a lot of space now, guys, right? So we know that the daily uptrend has now been confirmed by the bulls. We have a ton of space. Anything about 45, roughly, just going to be looking for a daily higher low for further trend continuation. So watch the back test of this location right there. One of my favorite trade setups, guys, the breakout, retest, and possibly run. Why do we continuously have an upside bias? Well, because, guys, the bulls control all the longer time frames. Monthly uptrend, continuation is nice. Weekly uptrend as well, continuation is very nice so it stands to argue that any short-term pullbacks in the daily until proven otherwise on the higher term time frames are just going to be for that dip buying opportunities for possible further longs so that's how i'll be positioning in financials myself looking quite healthy moving into healthcare right now healthcare also no pun intended looking very healthy look we were pointing this out last week cross of the macd on the daily it has been in a bearish territory since the early portion of september and now couple this as well as an engulfing move on the daily guys and you have a very nice recipe at the bull's capacity to when this move higher is topped out looking for a daily higher low for possible further trend continuation. This is over a 100% bounce. It give the, gives the bulls the best chance at resetting into a new daily uptrend. So looking quite healthy there. Now, in terms of the weekly, the weekly is also not looking too bad, guys. It was in a weekly downtrend. And let me just erase this. So it was in a weekly downtrend. And what we're going to be looking for here is the size of the bounce on the weekly. As of right now, the size of the bounce on the weekly is quite good up to about 618. So even if we forfeit this daily uh, uptrend right here and reset into daily lows or a daily downtrend, we do have a decent amount of space here to be able to reset into a higher low and go for the weekly uptrend shift. So not looking too bad. The bulls have control of the short term time frames, but we still this is step one. Still need to do step two, which is confirming that into a daily uptrend. Moving into SMH semiconductors, they are also looking quite good today. Beautiful daily uptrend continuously in motion right now. And we've now cracked above this big red box of resistance. So the bulls can make me turn this green because now that will be support. So let me just do it for you guys right now. So nobody's confused. Perfect. So we're now sitting above this area of resistance, which will now be support. You guys know the drill looking for whenever this move is topped out. How do you know the move is topped out, guys? Watch for the loss of the 12th of May coupled with a loss of the hourly trend change. You need to see the low, higher low, lower low, loss of the hourly trend, loss of the EMA. That's how you know that we're most likely going in for a few days of daily consolidation. And at that, that point, looking for a higher low, anything above 237, looking for the higher low into this big area of support, which also has the moving averages as confluence, higher low for possible further trend continuation. This one will be highly contingent on the success of the earnings put out by ASML and TSFC over the course of this week. So we will see how the index reacts to those earnings thereafter. But as of now, looking good, weekly trend con confirmed by the bulls as well. So even if the bulls roll over the daily here, you know the drill, right? Tons of space on the weekly. Anything above 214, looking for a weekly higher low for further trend continuation. The bulls control all major time frames right now too. And look at this weekly, guys. Weekly about to cross on the MACD. If these earnings are bullish, this one's going to fly. Moving into IWM Russell. IWM Russell as well, benefiting from today's green action in the market. So putting in a very nice engulfing move, guys, right? Daily downtrend was underway. Now we got the 100% engulfing move. It gives the bulls enough space on any pullback to reset into a new higher low and go for the daily uptrend shift. But that being said, we know that we're moving into a big zone of resistance, which is 225. And that also carries in to the larger area of resistance set back in 2020 and 2021. So right now it is looking good for some continuation. Just understand that moving into this area could be a decent location for some initial take profit trades, as this might be a little bit of a challenging location for the bulls to really get through um you know as it has been in the past so just be mindful of that but as of right now the russell's not looking too bad moving into the dow jones right now dow jones up about 0.4 percent looking fairly good on this index too daily uptrend is entirely to the bulls at this point in time daily higher lows are set and on to the new leg of daily uptrend so as soon as this move is topped out how do you know moves topped out, guys? Well, just keep an eye. This is the guide. The 12 EMA is always your short-term guide. If we lose the 12 EMA while losing the hourly uptrend, then you know you're in for daily consolidation. And where could that daily consolidation take us, Will? I'm glad you asked. It will probably take us right back into this location right there, setting up for the daily higher low, breakout of this resistance, breakout, retest, and possibly run for another leg of daily uh, daily uptrend. And even if we were to roll this over, guys, even if we roll over into the daily downtrend at that point, 
What are we going to be looking for? Just a weekly higher low on the Dow Jones for further trend continuation. The bulls are in absolute full control right now of this weekly uptrend. Now, taking a look at some of our minor sectors that we don't cover very often, XLP. So XLP is your consumer defensives, Walmart, Costco, Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, stuff like that, tobacco companies, right? So after having a little bit of a pullback as we got some rotation back into tech, they are not looking too bad, protecting the 12 EMA on the weekly. But myself personally, guys, I want a little bit more. Maybe I'm getting too greedy on this one, but I would like to see a back test of the 80 to 79 level, just a monthly retest of the product prior all-time highs for some possible continuation, but there's definitely no red flags on the longer term chart. Matter of fact, the bulls are trying to get back this daily uptrend. So we'll see if they can actually get it done. Uh, moving into utilities, utilities were hit quite hard by the rally in interest rates, but they have now too uh, kind of recaptured their momentum right here. Looking very good, but utilities similar to uh, what we were looking at on XLP, right? I need a little bit more of a pullback on utilities to get me interested. But if you're in right now, this one for me is a hold. It's just tough to buy it up here, right? But if you're in, it's a hold for me and real estate too. Real estate not looking too bad either guys trying to curl around as best as they can we know they're in the daily downtrend looking for the lower highs possible lower low continuation unless the bulls put in a heck of a bounce move and get it back right on the weekly consolidation coming into the 12 ema as well and this one could be very very interesting for some continuation i i would be surprised if we get back to the back test area of 4140 on the monthly but this one i might be playing individual plays the one that i'm looking at more specifically you guys know this by now my favorite real estate stock of them all has to be vici right vici setting up the weekly higher lows using prior resistance as support using the 12 ema this one could be decent for a little bit of continuation trade now moving into are yields. So let's take a look at yields for TLT trade, everybody, right? So take a look right here, guys. I've identified a few key levels. So number one is pulling up into the four and a half to about 4.56 range. This, after such a tremendous rally, look, we are now daily overbought conditions on your 20-year yields. And that doesn't happen too often, right? This is not NVIDIA. And we're also not back in the huge inflation resurgence concerns of October of 2023. when We got the last breakout out here uh, of the daily overbought conditions, right? The last time in most recent history was in April. April was when the market was having a little bit of a sell down as well. As of right now, guys, back into overbought, but we are retesting an extremely large area, guys, of both daily resistance, weekly resistance, and most importantly, monthly resistance too. So I think the bulls, um, I think the bulls are almost tapped out here, and I think we will resume this monthly downtrend with due time. But we have to be patient with this one. We know there's a lot of speculation and yields right now, and why TLT has been down as well. So we're looking for the bottoming out on TLT, which is just somewhat of the inverse of your yields, right? They don't exactly move one for one. Just because the yields are up 1% does not mean TLT goes down 1%, a little bit different. Uh, but this one too, right? To the downside, daily oversold conditions coming into a huge area of prior support. So I would not be support surprised if we get some temporary relief here on the TLT and some temporary relief on the long-term yields as well, heading back to the downside. Now, let's take a look at Bitcoin today. So Bitcoin on an absolute tear and really fulfilling the prophecy that we're looking for, right? So I'll remind you, this was a weekly trade setup, which is the reason that we took the trades back here uh, over the last week on the channel, right? So we knew we had an engulfing move back here and they lost it, right? This was almost 100% engulfing, they lost it, right? Here as well, 90, 100% engulfing, but they lost it, right? This one too, 60, 70% uh, move in terms of retracement size, and they lost it. This is the first over 100% weekly engulfing move. The bulls were trying for the weekly higher low to try to go for the weekly trend change. We're almost there. Look at this weekly MACD on Bitcoin, guys, right? Curling, curling. I wouldn't say it's confirmed just yet. We need a weekly close above 63, uh, 60, 66, 350, excuse me. And that will give you your first weekly uptrend on Bitcoin in about six, seven months worth of time at this point. So it's looking very good on the daily, looking very good too. Huge move higher. So even if we consolidate here for a couple days, guys, just understand what you're looking for. Looking for a daily higher low for possible for their trend continuation into the weekly push higher, right? So Bitcoin not looking too bad at all. I like it. The entry was actually back here. Very tough for me to buy this one on the breakout of this candle, right? Since, you know, we were in back here and I built up a lot. I was telling you guys on the channel, the long-term buys for Bitcoin for me were down here. The swing trade was right here. It's tough for me to tell you guys to, to you know, well, it's not financial advice, but it's tough for me to say, yeah, it's a great idea to be buying up here into resistance when I'm kind of in from down here, right? It would just kind of be in bad faith from me. Um, so at that point, guys, 
you know, I'm more keen on waiting for some shorter term pullbacks. But, you know, if you're if, you, if you're very, very risk on and you want to take the chance for the weekly trend breakout, who am I to stop you? Right. It's not the perfect. It's not the trade setup that I like, uh, but obviously everybody is different, of course. Now, moving into our big tech names. So Apple not looking too poorly at all today. One point six five percent. Apple is trying, guys. They're trying to get back the daily uptrend, right? So we knew we had a little bit of a daily downtrend right here. Nice engulfing move. They haven't truly set the uh, the daily higher lows. We never really lost the hourly time frame. Just a bunch of triple bottoms, right? There was no actual confirmation breakdown lower. So I wouldn't say that this is a daily higher low. This is just one daily move. So in the event we get rejected at 233 and pull back lower, you need to see the bulls set up a base of support, possibly coming back down into our 225 set up a daily higher low and then go for the daily trend change go for the trend breakout on the weekly the weekly is not looking too bad either as a matter of fact this could be argued to be somewhat of a bull flag right looking quite good for a bull flag setup you like to see the bulls really consolidate at the top end of this range usually a bullish pattern for a little bit of follow through here so I would not be surprised if apple does well this week and we get the weekly breakout that will be officially finally a weekly confirmed uptrend since as of now it's only been some triple top action i however i'm not playing it for a breakout trade at all I prefer Apple uh, down here in the lower 215 range or even lower. And the peg ratio right now is very, very high. So I have a bunch of shares on Apple in my long-term portfolio. I'm just holding them. I'm not buying more up here. I'm not selling them. I'm just holding. But as of right now, even for swing trades, guys, the risk reward isn't the best, right? We're kind of targeting the all-time high breakout as the next area, um, you know, for take profit. And the downside is kind of equidistant at this point from the breakout range. So not my preferred range for Apple, but congratulations to the bulls. I don't see any major red flags on the short-term technicals just yet. Now, moving into AMD. AMD not getting a lot of love today. 1.56% to the downside. However, that might open up. If they have one more day like this, guys, Probably going to open up some strikes down here for some short puts, which is my preferred way of playing AMD stock. So that being said, what are we looking for right here? We know that the bulls are looking for the daily higher low and they got it pretty much last Thursday, right? And since Thursday, we have not have not changed the hourly trend. So we cannot say necessarily that this is the true daily higher low. You would need to see an hourly trend change, which is not what they've done. As a matter of fact, today they forfeited that and rolled over into a new hourly downtrend. So this move down is technically speaking one single move. So at that point, we're still looking for the daily higher low, anything above 158.52, looking for the daily higher low for possible further trend continuation. However, if we continue sliding and roll over, we'll just know that this is a huge area of support, guys, right? This area on AMD, let me just take off this line right here. This huge area on AMD, 162 down to about 153. You guys know I love playing that zone. And even if we roll this over here, guys, right? We roll this over and lose a bit of the daily uptrend. You know the drill. What are we looking for? Looking for the weekly higher low for possible further trend continuation thereafter. This is the time frame that makes the most sense, right? So anything above 133 at this point, just a healthy pullback looking for the higher low for further trend continuation. So if we pull back here, guys, into the mid 150s, let's just say that it, for me will at least will be a little bit of call option territory for some swing trades for a next leg higher, possibly into the 180 zone of resistance. So AMD not looking too bad right now, especially when we look at the longer, longer time frame, such as the weekly. Moving into Amazon. So Amazon also not doing too badly today, 0.68%, getting rejected from our area of overhead resistance, guys. It's completely logical, right? This has been a pain point for Amazon stock a couple of times throughout this year so far. And this, this time today was no different, right? So getting rejected, but what are we looking at here? It was a daily downtrend. The bulls put in an engulfing move. Now it's up for them to, to do step two. This is a nice step one. Now they need to set the higher low and confirm the daily uptrend and smash through this resistance. So step number one is done, but the job is not complete for the bulls. That being said, in the event Amazon were to roll over this entire move down, here guys well at that point the weekly is still not looking too bad we'll still just be looking for consolidation a little bit of a red flag if we cut the 181 lows because then that would be a meaningful weekly downtrend move and at that point we'd probably be looking for areas in the mid 170s but so far that has not happened that's just speculation in the event we continue to roll over i'm here to tell you that in any case 
If we move back down to 180 to roughly 175, I will be buying the dip heavy on Amazon using a combination of possibly short puts and even maybe some call options moving forward. And I'll show all those on the channel, of course. Moving on to Google. So Google up a very healthy 1.11%. They actually hit 167.5%. Before retracing, this was really first thing in the morning, and then they kind of really didn't do much, right? But they do control the short-term hourly timeframes, which is looking very good. So just keep an eye, guys. The size of the bounce on Google is quite adequate right now, if I if I do have to say so myself. About 70-75% bounce on Google. So that is good because we know the context was a daily downtrend. And if we want to see that reversed, we need to see the bulls have a great big bounce and then reset a higher low and move in to the new daily uptrend. The pattern that I'm liking the most on Google is this massive inverse possible head and shoulders that we're setting up for here, guys. So I do like this one. You even see it better on the weekly time frame as well, right? It's a bit more clear. So in the event we retest these lows, guys, in the low 160s, I will stand on this hill that I've been on for the last arguably two months at this point, right? If Google retest around the 200 EMA down here, you see it best on the weekly time frame setup, right? If we retest down here, lower 160s, I'm a big fan of playing some short puts on Google and even going for some possible leap call options because the valuation of the stock is extremely, extremely cheap at this point in time. Their net margins are beautiful. Their EPS expansion is gorgeous. Their revenue expansion is gorgeous. All lines of businesses are firing on full cylinders. And most of all, and actually all analyst price targets are above the current price. So good little recipe here if we can find Google on a dip to add to some longer dated positions. Now, moving into Meta, I was looking for my coffee. I don't even have one today. So moving on to Meta, Meta up about 0.08%. Not looking too bad, right? We know who's in control right here. The daily bulls, of course. So nice daily uptrend in motion for Meta. Trying to find the daily higher lows for possible further continuation into the 600 psychological resistance. However, if we roll this over lower high into lower low, lose the daily uptrend into daily downtrend, lose the 12 EMA, you guys must understand that we are just looking for a weekly higher low for further trend continuation. And this is one that I'll be patiently waiting for in the event we retest 550 to 545, the breakout retest and possibly run trade. I will be sitting right here with some decent size to play meta with because I really like this setup. It's one of my preferred setups for some trend continuation trades, right? So that's the style of trade I'm looking for on meta. Up here, a little bit tough to chase it right now, in my humble opinion, but there's no real red flags as of now. Meta's still looking strong on the daily. Nothing's broken yet, even though the MACD is slightly curling over right now down there. Right, the weekly also, no major red flags, but if you do pull back here, just know that this is my next trade opportunity for Meta. Moving into Microsoft right now. So Microsoft, decent day, but same thing as Google, right? Very nice pop until about 10 a.m. And then they kind of went sideways all day and then kind of fell through at the close, right? So Microsoft getting once again rejected by this area that's been very challenging, right? Very, very, very challenging for Microsoft a few times, at least five, six times all throughout this year so far. This has been the entire year. This is early February back here, right? So moving on in, we know the case for Microsoft right now is a big daily downtrend. And we know that we need to see the bulls reverse this into a new daily uptrend, which I'm happy to say they did actually do today. So this is actually a new daily uptrend confirmation. Even though we didn't close up there, we did break higher, right? So higher high. Now at this point, the bulls need to protect down here, 413.20, because we know the initial bounce size was not the best, guys. Usually for an initial bounce before resetting into the daily uptrend, you'd like to see 50, 60% retracement size at least, right? The initial bounce only got as high as 38 too. It doesn't give the bulls the best chance, which also leads me to be a little bit skeptical about the bulls capacity to protect these lows and kind of set up for a new daily move higher, right? I would not be surprised if we indeed roll these over on any market, overall market, or any earnings weakness as a whole. That being said, the weekly is not looking too bad, but the bulls need to play some defense now around the 405 down to 400. You would not like to lose this weekly low because then you would kind of invalidate the entire weekly uptrend and they'd have to restart everything from scratch, which would just be, it would just be a longer procedure for Microsoft. That being said, I like Microsoft in the 415s. I have been making a lot of plays on Microsoft in the 415s for upside continuation but my preferred area where I'll go in with a lot more size is if we retest that 400 down about, well, 405 down about 390. That is my ideal, ideal, ideal sweet spot to go in a lot heavier on Microsoft. Now, 
Moving into Netflix, down 1.35% after hitting the Friday highs, but there's not much we can do here on Netflix, guys, because they have earnings on Thursday, right? So only two short days of price action left. I would be highly surprised if we mount a massive rally towards brand new all-time highs or if we flush this complete area. So the price action until earnings should be quite muted. That being said, Netflix usually moves about 6-7% after earnings. And now that we're above the prior highs, above this big support range, we have a decent amount of cushion, right? Because even if we move from here, let's say we hover around here, 713, 720 through earnings, and then earnings has a miss, let's say, well, then we'd only come down to the bottom end of this big area of support. It would not be looking too bad for your overall bulls, which control the weekly, right? The weekly is the most important one on this time frame or on this stock rather, looking for a possible weekly higher low, anything at that point above 661. Just looking for a weekly higher low for possible further trend continuation. So if I had one level that the bulls cannot lose after earnings, if they want to keep the trend alive, it's going to be 661. So let's keep our eyes peeled. And obviously, guys, if they just mount a rally after earnings, of course, your next psychological areas of resistance have to start at 750 and then all the way up to 800, of course. Now, moving into NVIDIA, NVIDIA, so tough to stop this one, guys. I've, I've been saying it a few times on the channel, right? Stopping NVIDIA when SPY and QQQ are running up is like trying to stop a freight train, right? There's a lot of bullish momentum on this one. And NVIDIA almost, almost coming close to new all-time highs today. 2.43%. Congratulations to all the NVIDIA bulls out there. Looking very good, guys. Looking very good. Now, the daily RSI is getting up there, but we know it's NVIDIA, right? It can stay overbought on the daily RSI for a very long time. So this probably not the best gauge to determine whether or not the move is topped out. How do you know the move is topped out, guys? You will know when they lose the hourly 12 May. Look how good of a guide this is every single rally, right? And then when we lose it, you know that you're in for some daily pullback. Same thing happened here. You lose it in a big way and you're most likely going to be rolling over, right? So keep that in mind. Watch for the rollover. Need to lose a 12 MA, need to lose the hourly time frame as well. And only then will you know you're due for a daily pullback. But then again, what's the context of the daily pullback? We're in a massive daily uptrend right now, looking for daily higher lows for possible further trend continuation. This is the good old breakout retest of the 130 range of prior resistance, which is now support, confluence of the moving averages, nice retest area, and possibly run. So if I had to take a swing trade on net on NVIDIA, it would not be FOMOing at the highs right here. I would wait for better risk reward in this level right there and manage my stop loss accordingly. On the weekly, looking very good, guys. Beautiful weekly breakout in motion. So at that point, any loss of the daily uptrend into daily downtrend would just be looking for a weekly higher low. Anything above 101, looking for the weekly higher low for possible further trend continuation. So no red flags on NVIDIA at all. But this one, can move and will be beholden to the results of ASML on Wednesday and TSMC on the Thursday session. Moving into Tesla now. So Tesla not looking too bad either, 0.62% to the upside. Not looking too bad, right? They're kind of protecting this 200 daily moving average right down here. And we're coming into the very big area of support for Tesla, right? This whole uh, 200 to 220 area has been a massive area of congestion for the most part for the stock in the last three years, right? Of course, there's another one down here in the 150s to 160s, but now we're dealing with a big one as well. So confluence of all the weekly moving averages too. Unfortunately for the bulls, they've now lost all weekly momentum, guys. Pretty much all of it, right? Same thing happened here. Year, they lost all the momentum and it took them a while to get the weekly uptrend back, right? So I'm thinking somewhat the same. If the markets remain bullish, earnings season are bullish, um, Tesla earnings are bullish as well. They can possibly do it, but it might not be the V shape that everybody's looking for. They might have to put in somewhat of a two-step process similar to what happened back here. So that being said, just pay close eye, co close attention as, as to how we're reacting right now, but not looking too bad. And the bulls on the daily guys, we need to start everything from scratch, right? First, you need to get a daily bounce underway. For that, you need the bulls to recapture the hourly time frame. No hourly uptrend in sight, then you know the daily move down is not finished. Wait for that hourly uptrend. Then when you have the hourly uptrend, that will translate to the daily push higher. Then you look for the size of the bounce on the daily. Give us a 60, 61.8, right? 61% retracement size. And then the bulls have a great chance at setting up for the daily higher low and going for that daily trend change. So they need to start everything from scratch. But Tesla not looking too bad. If we pull back any further into this area, guys, and I, I can line up maybe some uh, short-term oversold conditions, deeply oversold conditions on the four-hour time frame, pulling back into like 210, 205, 
there might be a play for some short puts down here uh, in the low 190s to maybe 180s if there's good volatility. I wouldn't be opposed to taking that trade. Matter of fact, that's been the one I've been waiting for on Tesla for a while. And now lastly, Palantir, the rocket ship that is Palantir, right? So Palantir down about 0.25% today, but I mean, there's still no red flags, right? But the one thing you have to keep an eye out, guys, is as I was saying, the loss of the hourly time frame, right? Keep a close eye on when they lose the hourly time frame. If you lose the hourly uptrend, right, as they're they, they're kind of doing it right now, right? Get a break of here tomorrow with a significant loss of the 12 EMA, and you have a very good chance that your daily consolidation is underway. But then again, Palantir Bulls have tons of space. Anything above this guy right here, 3884, just looking for a daily higher low for possible further trend continuation. Monitor this pullback very closely, guys. If we give all of this move back, then there's high probabilities that we go with the lower high into lower low, and that would signal weekly consolidation, but it's going to be a healthy move, guys. The, who's in control right here? The bulls are in massive control, right? It's just eventually Palantir does have a few weeks where we just simply pull back, right? Healthy pullbacks are good for every single stock. Nothing can continuously go up in a straight line. And I'm saying that as a Palantir shareholder, uh, you know, and my average cost is down here at about 11 bucks, right? So I would love to see this one continue printing gains as much as the next person, but sometimes we have to be realistic and watch the technicals, right? If for some reason over the next two weeks, we lose the daily uptrend, then we're just due for weekly pullback. And at that point, I'd be targeting the 38 to 39. The 12 EMA would probably have time to curl up into that region. So you might give a little bit of this back. But look, anything above 29.42, just looking for a weekly higher low for possible further trend continuation. So no red flags at all. Palantir is looking very good. And that's everything we had for our daily market recaps. So hopefully you appreciated that. Now let's dive into a few of the positions that I still have open. You'll see, guys. We, wrote, we went over everything on the Friday session, so I'm only going to talk about the new positions that I added today. Everything else is exactly the same. As you can see, these um, the Bitcoin short put, the one with the longer duration of time on it, that one is moving very, very nicely, guys. We were able to pull forward three, four weeks of premium in just a few short days, so this trade is going fantastic. I love doing the, a lot of people ask me, can I write longer dated puts? Yes, you absolutely can, provided you're still getting the uh, proper ROI on a weekly basis, right? So you can write short puts for longer durations, uh, provided you're timing the entries very, very well, right? You want them on a downswing, preferably on companies that are either daily oversold uh, or close. And then you can do it, as you can see, I did the same thing on the Googles. When we pulled back last week into the 160 range, I went with more time, the November 22s, more time on them for $6.10. And now you can see we've pulled out $2.10 of premium over one and a half percent in just a few short days of trading. So that's what I mean when I talk about the more advanced wheel strategy, when we're just trying to, I'm not waiting till expiry on this, guys. No, 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 no. We're just looking to pull a lot of this premium forward and pocket it as soon as possible, right? It gives us better ROI than sometimes just trading the weeklies, provided we find the entries properly. The only one, the new one that I added today, guys, is EVVTY. So EVVTY, if you don't know what it is, I went over it a few times on the channel, uh, but it's a, essentially it's a SIN stock, right? So what they do is very simply, they run all the services for on for not only online casinos, but also in-person casinos as well. You may have been on a gambling website and you see um, poker dealers, like live human beings, like either dealing hands of poker or dealing hands of blackjack. And then there's tons of online people at the table. Well, the all of that pretty much, I dare to say 95% of all those people you see, yeah, that's done by EVVTY. Even if their shirts say MGM Grand, even if their shirts say Las Vegas Sands, that is outsourced to this company right here. It's just their employees wear the uniforms of whatever company uh, the gambling room is that day, right? So that's how this company works. Extremely, extremely high net margins. This is like Visa and MasterCard, over 50% net margins because they operate in the in locations where they don't have to pay very, very high wages. Think either Eastern Europe or Latin America. Uh, so their margins are very, very high. EPS growth is fantastic. All the analyst price targets are largely above. Revenue growth is fantastic. They're trading at a 1.13 peg. And I patiently, patiently waited, guys, for this very long area of support into the 90s. That's a monthly range of support, guys. 
Weekly is looking crushed as well. And the daily is finally daily oversold. I've been waiting for it for a while. So I think there's some really good risk to reward on this trade. First exit, probably going to be the uh, low 100s. And the second exit, I want to get a little bit juicier here at around the midpoint right there. So I did add a couple shares. If we come down into the 8580, this will be a no brainer buy for me, guys. I'll probably go in with an additional $2,000. Uh, I would love to do options on this, but since it trades over the counter, there's no options and there's no margin, right? So if you go straight shares, you kind of have to use a lot more buying power than if you would another a stock if you're using margin or something like that, right? And even a website like uh, Guru Focus, um, if you look at the summary here for EVVTY, this is known as one of the more solid um, analysis tools in terms of a website or whatnot. Uh, Guru Focus score of 93, five-star rating, and they view it as well as being significantly undervalued. And they don't, they don't only use like the peg ratio and stuff like that, right? They use like so many, so many, so many metrics that are out of scope for this discussion. But just to show you guys, there are always opportunities in the market, right? Even when, uh, when everything's running up, you will find some high quality stocks that have just not run yet. Another one that I didn't take myself, but was in a uh, high conviction setup for um, our Discord members, just to give you guys an idea, right? Sometimes I post some very high conviction setups and sometimes I, just, I don't take them myself, right? I post so many different trade ideas and sometimes when my positions are kind of full up, you know, I'll post trade ideas for different people if maybe they are not in every single play. And the other one I posted uh, just last week, as a matter of fact, first of October, two weeks ago, was Honeywell. This one was such a solid company, such an easy play, guys. Like you've seen me make easy plays on easy companies like this all throughout last year, right? Think of the McDonald's trade, Vici, John Deere, like Home Depot. There's been so many of them that we've actually crushed on the channel, right? Visa, um, the list goes on, right? Apple, Google, like the list goes on. So when there's high quality companies like this, big, big, big range of consolidation. Look at this chart on Honeywell, right? This is it. This they generate over 50% of their revenues from defense contracting, similar to LMT, similar to RTX, similar to General Dynamics, right? And similar to Northrop Grumman, which is, they've all ran except for Honeywell, right? So Honeywell was kind of the laggard behind. Great, great, great test of the moving averages here. Monthly new uptrend. They were looking for the monthly higher lows, got them. And now we look to push, push, push into the all-time highs. This one was a great trade, right? We got it perfectly at the lows and now this one's running as well. So, you know, those are the types of trades that I go for. I think you guys know me. You don't see a lot of YOLOs on the channel. You don't see me chasing uh, stocks at the high. And I think that's the moral of the story in this market right now, right? Don't chase things, uh, you know, like don't, you know, I, I can't give you guys financial advice, but like, you know, like buying Palantir up here, like here, sure. Like, but it's still, a ri it's, it's a risky proposition, right? Very risky. You did get some follow through. Congratulations if you took the gamble but it's a more risky bet, right? Usually you don't see me guys, you, usually you guys don't see me do that. So that's the new trade on EVVTY. Still have all the Google positions, no change there. And we also have the new Microsoft added positions, right? The new call debit spreads for February. Uh, those are roughly moving in line. We're a bit up on them since we opened them last week. One remaining Netflix contract. I used to have four. We closed them all at a profit close to the highs on Netflix in the last week. Happy with that. I'm holding this one through earnings. And the only other ones that I opened today, guys, is a Schwab $61 put. This is a two standard deviation move for earnings. So you guys know the earnings strategy that I run sometimes on very specific stocks, right? I'll look at the expected move for Schwab. So you go on Schwab right here. I look at the earnings expected move. Schwab has earnings tomorrow before the open. Uh, hello, website. You're going to do it. Charles Schwab, anyone? All right. So sometimes when I change the ticker in the URL, it works. So let's get it. All right, so, so anyways, take my word for it. Maybe it's because it's after the close right now. The expected move was about 5%. So what I chose to do is whenever I see an expected move of 5%, I usually go two times the expected move and I see if it lines up with a big area of weekly support. As of right now, you can see that this is a large area of weekly support for Charles Schwab and 61 is at the bottom end of that. Now, the premium received might appear a little bit small, guys, but we are literally in and out of this trade possibly in one single day. So this will be, you know, $13 realized probably by tomorrow morning if Charles Schwab opens either slightly red, flat, or goes higher. We'll be able to close this trade very, very, very quickly. Uh, we also went with the TD. I went with the TD Ameritrade uh, play right here just because they were crushed. It was in my top five options play video yesterday, looking for the 55s, and we got about 22 cents, which is great. It's a great annualized ROI, right? So 22 divided by 55 
times 365 divided by four days to expiry till Friday, uh, you're looking at about a 36% ROI annualized. So as long as it's above 30%, guys, I love taking these trades. It was one of the only wheel trades that was kind of open today. I'll be looking at AMD for tomorrow, but this one, in my opinion, guys, TD Ameritrade, I mean, the, I showed it last night on the video, but in case you didn't see the video, right? G huge area of prior support, huge, right? This was resistance. This is massive support for the last like two years, pretty much. So I'm counting on that 55 level um, to act as support once more. And that's pretty much it, guys, in terms of the uh, plays that I made for today, right? Uh, oh, everything else in the portfolio is the same. I will wait for more plays to come in after these earnings, right? If we have some big drops, I'll be looking to most likely play those. That's why I'm saving a lot of my buying power this week for possible plays that get freed up as a result of earnings. Maybe not even some of these. Maybe some of these affect other plays or maybe it affects the whole market and the market pulls back or whatnot, then other plays will free up, right? So since we're coming into earnings season, I'm being very discreet with my buying power and trying to find the best opportunities with all this increase in volatility over the next one and two weeks, right? So hopefully that makes sense. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you did, consider dropping a like. Would really appreciate it for the growth of the channel. Also, consider subscribing to the channel if you're new. We do these every Monday through Friday after the close. And if ever you have any questions at all, guys, always feel free to leave them down below in the comments. If you want me to look at a specific stock with some technical analysis, you want a second opinion on an options trade, um, you know, macroeconomic discussion in terms of recession, no recession, stuff like that. Whatever you guys want, leave it down below and I'll be happy to answer you. And of course, if you want access to our private member Discord, where I show all of my trades, my idea, my trade ideas as well, the real-time trades. We do private live streams every morning, 9.30 to 10.30 a.m., where we do some live trading as well, and all my private video content too, and just chat with me every single day about everything, all of your plays, stuff like that. Well, just click the link down below, guys, and get more information on the Discord. So, always a pleasure. Happy to be with you guys today. See you tomorrow after the close. Take care and peace.